Hi, I'm Greg Sigler with Sky Warrior, and today we're going to be talking about step one on the military to airline transition page on our website. Step one has to do with FAA class one physicals. Uh, this video might be a little bit drawn out, but it is very, very important, which is why I'm going to start with a couple of horror stories that I've seen since I've been here uh, at Sky Warrior working with uh, military aviators. So, step one, story one. A uh, Marine pilot friend of mine started the FAA Class 1 physical process up in Virginia. Uh, didn't get through it basically because the AME he was using, Aviation Medical Examiner, um, was only approved for 2s and 3s. Couldn't do Class 1s, didn't know it at the time, just a small mix-up. Relocated his family. When he did that, went to the a new AME, got the Class 1 physical, no problem. When the AME went to print it out, Bang, FAA flagged it. Long story short, they basically flagged it because it looked like he was shopping for AMEs. That happens in the GA world. People can't go to one AME, can't get what they need, go to another one, that guy signs them off, girl signs them off, whatever the case. So, um, FAA flagged it. A pretty simple thing to explain, except that when he called the FAA, they said, what's your case number? 10,500. Oh, well, we're on. 8,500. So it'll be about six months before we get to you. Big problem. So uh, be real careful with uh, your timeline on your FAA class one. Story number two, uh, pilot uh, separated, had already separated from the military, wanted to do his ATP rating, um, went to go get a class one physical. Uh, they flagged it. No class one physical for you. And the reason was is because he had a small medical condition. Nothing actually major. It was pretty shocking to me. Um, but the military gave him a waiver for it. Uh, so he just figured the FAA would too. No such luck. Got to the FAA. Bang. They flagged it. That took about eight months to get done. So uh, when it comes to the FAA Class 1, 99% of the time you're going to be fine. But I would strongly suggest you doing that prior to your separation. Remember, if you're under 40, the class one is good for a year. If you're over 40, it's good for six months. So use that as your timeline. Okay, so last thing I'll say about the FAA class one is uh, VA. Uh, I would certainly say anything that you are entitled to or any medical condition that you suffered as a result of your military service, go for it. Put it in and, and make sure that you're taken care of for the rest of your life. Um, I know with military aviators, big one is hearing loss. Um, no, no big deal usually there. But there are other things that I have seen uh, that have caused issues with the class one. Sleep apnea, um, PTSD, numerous other things. Um, so if, if you're going to uh, have a condition that you're going to put in for, um, you need to start that process a little earlier on in your career. Sometimes that's a little difficult because there are certain things, especially if you're in a flying job right up until the end, could down you from your flying status. But just know that once you separate, if you have any kind of condition that you've uh, applied for for the VA as far as a medical condition, uh, it could take a while to get cleared up in the realm of the FA. So just be real careful with, um, with applying for things. Again, you earned it. You, you deserve it. If you've got any kind of condition, just, just know that, that I have seen that stuff happen before. So now that I've rambled a little bit, let's take a quick look at the website and we'll kind of show you what we have laid out for you uh, on the Class 1 physical. Okay, so now that you're back on our military airline transition page, you scroll down, you see step one is the FA Class 1 medical. Two things on here, MedExpress and FA Medical Examiner. Um, this one locates medical examiners, and this one is to fill out your MedExpress. What is the MedExpress? Essentially, you go in here, you create an account. You need to do this before you set an appointment with the medical examiner um, because it, it, it's going to generate a number that they need to pull your file. Um, when you click on it, it's going to ask you to create a link or, or, excuse me, a user profile. But basically what it is is you're just filling out your medical history, making sure everything's correct, and then hit submit. And so it's all online, basically database. So when you go in there, you give them the medical examiner, your number, they pull it off, and you're good to go. But you have to have this done before a medical examiner will see you in most cases. So you need to do it. Um, there's a, a video that I'll link back to either in the comment section or on this video that um, 
has a gentleman going through the entire process. It's 20 minutes long. It's pretty drawn out, but it's very informative. Um, but basically what you need to know about MedExpress is it's essentially your medical history online that the FA doctor can pull off. So the second thing on the class one medical is the FA medical examiner location. Once you click this, um, it's basically going to search an AME aviation medical examiner for you. Um, designee type, you want the AME. Uh, I'm going to do a location search. We're going to search Pensacola. And we want a first class AME because not all of them can do first class. Search. And I get my list of AMEs in the Pensacola area. So for locating one, um, that's what you need to do. Uh, and then you must fill out this MedExpress form prior to going to see your AME. Okay, so that's a brief overview of the Class 1 FAA Medical. Uh, any questions for us, please leave them below in the comments section or any other stories you've heard of why people were ineligible to get the Class 1. I'd be interested to hear them. Um, here's a video by the EAA. A little drawn out, but it is totally thorough when it comes to the uh, Med Express process. As always, if you got something out of this, please like our YouTube channel, and we look forward to seeing you next time.